Hello, my name is James Nelson. I'm here today with Father Odell talking about All Souls Day coming up here in the church. So, Father, can you tell me what is the origin of All Souls Day? Well, you know, there are lots of origins. I think it was a, in some ways, it was a pagan custom for many centuries, but the one who Christianized it was a monk in Europe in the 10th century. His name was Odillo of Cluny, and he uh, instituted this memorial day to pray for the dead, those that uh, he believed were in purgatory. He wanted uh, the faithful to have an ability to pray for them and offer their prayers that they be released to heaven soon. I know, at least for a lot of people, sometimes even for myself, they tend to mix up All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference between the two and um, how to really separate the two? Functionally, there's not a great deal of difference between the two. Both celebrate the saints of God. If you're in purgatory, you are a saint. You're not in the beatific vision. You're not with the Lord in heaven yet, but you are a saint. You're guaranteed to be a saint. Um, so when we talk about All Souls Day versus All Saints Day, All Saints Day generally refers to those souls that are already in heaven. All Souls Day, those souls that are still in purgatory. Okay, so why do we pray for the dead then, if they're no longer here? Well, first of all, um, as you know, Catholics believe that there's not just heaven and hell, there's also a third place called purgatory. Purgatory is a place where individuals who have uh, some temporal punishment or have had um, venial sins on their soul when they die go to be purified before they enter heaven. They're guaranteed to be saints of God, but uh, we pray for them so that we can use our prayers to help that process purify them so that they can go back to the Lord and be in the beatific vision. Catholics are a little bit unique in their praying for the dead. Uh, why do other faiths maybe not believe in praying for the dead? Well, it goes back to the um, tradition of trying to locate things in Scripture. How do we know that there is such a place as purgatory if um, it's not somewhere talked about? And uh, there are several places in Scripture. One of the most predominant of those is in the book of Maccabees where they talk about Judas Maccabeus sending his soldiers out to fight the Romans. And some of those soldiers were fearful enough of being captured that they were wearing pagan amulets or uh, uh, different little medals underneath their, their clothing so that if they were captured... Uh, they could say, well, see, I'm just, I'm really of your faith and that they wouldn't be persecuted. Um, so after the battle, Judas Maccabeus went out and found a lot of his soldiers laying there with these amulets on, um, and he instructed his followers to pray for them. Well, why would he instruct them to pray for them? If they're in heaven, they're beyond prayer. They don't need it. If they're in hell, no amount of prayer is going to do anything. Why would he ask them to do that? Um, so that is one of the pointers to, you know, the fact that there is purgatory. So why don't other faiths believe that? Because uh, the, at the time of the Reformation, uh, some of those books that are in the Catholic scriptures were just taken out by um, some of the reformers who didn't believe that they had a place in Scripture. Could you give me a few examples of how we can pray for the faithful departed on our own? Well, one of the things we're going to be doing uh, this coming weekend is lighting the necrology candles, and we'll light a candle for each person uh, that has died over the past five years in our parish. And at the end of that, we uh, are silently praying as I read off the names and then quite often what will happen is people will offer prayers on their own uh, and especially eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Another thing that you can do is uh, certainly have a mass offered for someone. Uh, the, the merit that goes with celebrating a mass is 
just astronomically powerful. So if you have a mass said for, let's say, a deceased grandparent or whatever, that helps them if they're in purgatory, saying the rosary. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we can pray for the uh, deceased. So can you explain a little bit what an, an indulgence is, uh, as well as if there's any special type of indulgence associated with All Souls Day? Well, an indulgence is an act that you encounter or that you take to apply to your own well-being or to someone else's well-being who's deceased. Um, so, for example, it might be a work of charity. It might be um, a prayer. It might be some uh, religious observance that you go through. And then the merit of doing that is called an indulgence. And you can either use it for yourself and your well-being or you could ask that it be applied to someone in purgatory uh, to shorten their time to help them be purified. So whenever we pray for the dead, that's why we're doing that. Um, not only do we pray for the dead as in terms of Hail Marys and Our Fathers, but we also pray the Mass for someone who is deceased that they be uh, brought home to heaven as quickly as possible. The one thing you can't do with indulgences is you cannot do something you are doing in an indulgence and apply to someone still living. Indulgences always are applied to the deceased. So Father, somebody told me there's two different types of indulgences. Can you explain the two different? Yes, I can. In fact, it's been a big uh, problem over the centuries since the time of the Protestant Reformation. Um, there are two kinds of indulgences. One is a time-oriented indulgence. For example, if you're praying for someone that is deceased, and it says at the bottom, if you say this prayer, you get 30 days indulgence. That means that that person that is, that, that's being applied to would um, be given, if you will, a credit, uh, you know, for a reduction of the time uh, in purgatory because that prayer helps cleanse them. The second kind of indulgence is called the plenary indulgence, which takes away all temporal punishment, takes away all uh, stain of sin in any way, so that if you receive a plenary indulgence um, and you were to die, for example, you'd go right to heaven. Um, and that can also be applied to someone in purgatory as well. Mm -hmm. A plenary indulgence requires certain things. Number one, you have to be in a state of grace to um, get the plenary indulgence. Uh, and I, I said, well, yeah, but somebody might have stain of sin on their soul, but if someone else is offering that plenary indulgence, then that's wiped away. You have to be properly disposed that you want this to happen. You have to pray for the intentions of the Holy Father. It's recommended that you go to confession to make sure you're in the state of grace and to receive the Eucharist as well. One of the plenary indulgences that we're most familiar with is the apostolic pardon. When somebody dies uh, or is ready to die, the priest in the name of the Holy Father can give them that plenary indulgence which wipes away any temporal punishment from their soul. So Father, when should somebody receive the apostolic pardon? Well, actually, this is a, a fairly important thing, and I, I really do want to address this in a little bit of length. Um, as soon as there is a suspicion that someone is near death, uh, they should receive the last rites of the church, which is the anointing of the sick, um, confession, even if they're unconscious, the priest can absolve sin, um, and then the apostolic pardon and holy communion, if possible. You do not delay that process. Um, sometimes people would like to gather in the presence of their loved one when they're anointed, which is fine. But if there's a danger of death, don't delay that uh, blessing and that apostolic pardon, waiting to get the, you know, the whole ranch together to celebrate it. Uh, it's more important that they be uh, anointed and that they be forgiven of sin, and that they receive the apostolic blessing. Uh, Father, are there any special indulgences related to All Souls Day? 
There are. Um, you can make a pilgrimage through the graveyard, or you can make a, a, a prayer trip to some designated church or destination uh, and say certain prayers that you know apply directly to All Souls Day. And you can get online and just make sure you're on a Catholic site, and they'll list. There's several different things that you could do. So just get on a Catholic site and they'll tell you. Is there a time that we are okay to stop praying for a specific faithful departed? Well, that's hard to say because we don't have a crystal ball that says this person is now in heaven. Um, so I think it's fairly safe to say you just keep praying for them. Are there any last words of wisdom that you have for us? You know, I, I just think like all of the various um, celebrations or observances in the church, All Souls Day is important. It reminds us of a lot of things. It reminds us not only of the faithful departed, but it reminds us that we're going to be there someday too. So um, that we, um, what we do for someone else now, we hope will be done for us when we die. So um, they're beautiful observances. They're meaningful observances. Uh, and to the best of our ability, we should make use of them to pray for those that have gone before us. Hey, Father. So, will purgatory be anything like the waiting room at my doctor's office? Well, unfortunately, it's not like the waiting room for your uh doctor's office, but it is a waiting room. You are in purgatory. You're already a saint of God, but you're awaiting admission to God's heaven. Perhaps a better analogy for it, it would be a shower room where you are preparing yourself because of some temporal punishment that you still have on your soul or because you died with venial sins, that it's a place for you are cleansed so that you can be admitted in perfection to God's throne room in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen.